Good morning everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be doing a bus life, van life, all things my life and the build Q&A. First off, I want to thank everyone for the questions that you sent in. I am going to try to get to most of them, but I know I'm not going to be able to cover everything. And so if you don't hear your question answered in today's video, I will try to go back to the video or the community tab where you originally commented and let you know my answer in the next week. For context and for those of you who might just be tuning in now to this video. My name is Alexandria and about a month ago I sold my van that I spent all of 2021 converting and traveling in. I decided for reasons that I'll mention later on in this video to sell that van and buy a school bus. So we're going to get into more of it today, but if you have questions that come up during this video, I guess leave your comments down below and I will try to answer those as well. The first question is from Elizabeth Carr. Any remote work type jobs you would recommend for van life, bus life, or travel life? Great question, Elizabeth, and I think this is one that a lot of people are curious about and something that I was curious about too. Honestly, I kind of stumbled into my previous slash part-time current remote work. I got the job that I have been working for the past two years almost on a whim. It was a networking opportunity and the job was remote due to COVID. And so when I started my job back in August 2020, I was operating under the impression that I would eventually be going back to the office. Now they are starting the transition into that process right now, but I actually recently just gave notice. I'm working part-time right now still remote and I'm going to be transitioning out over the next couple of weeks. In terms of recommendations, there are a couple of sites. I know Outdoor Jobs or OutsideJobs.com is a really wonderful place to find things like seasonal work. So if you're looking to travel, let's say for summer or for winter and work the opposite season, that can be a really, really great opportunity. They pay based on your skill sets and your experience. So I know that it can vary wildly, but if you have a skill set like cooking or waitressing or or maybe ski instructing, you might even be able to make a little bit more than the typical like seasonal work minimum wage uh, stereotype. In addition, I know that Vaga Jobs is a great resource. I was able to speak with them directly actually last year at the Gutted event and it was really cool to hear them talk about the company that they had put together and the people behind it are really awesome as well. So definitely want to support them and uh, I think it's a great place to find again more kind of unconventional work opportunities. That being said, if you're not in to the seasonal line of work but you want to be on the road or nomadic traveling most or all of the year I think there are a couple of really common lines of work that people are in I've heard and met a lot of engineers and software developers who are able to just work from their laptop they have a little desk or office set up in their rig which is really popular and I think pays pretty well too so if you're concerned about income and you have a degree in that field I think that's a really great option I've also met a lot of people who work as admin assistants or just assistants, HR staff, etc., who are able to work from their laptop or their phone, as well as virtual assistants, social media assistants, or managers. I think that most work can be completed online, obviously not like a doctor, or lawyer, specialty fields, but if you're somebody who has kind of general skills or you have experience in these areas, it just might take a little while to find one that fits you. All right, next question. Teresa Campbell asks on a similar note, may I ask what is your occupation. I would love to find something I could perhaps do online on the road. Thank you so much. So Teresa, I think I just answered most of your question, but again, I think that really online jobs can be available for everyone. It's just a matter of what you're looking for. Steve asks, the bus has many windows whereas the van didn't. Will you look to block some of them up or use reflective coating to keep the sun out in the summer? You mentioned in the latest video, heat loss is the greatest through win windows. So how will you cope in the winter? So these are really great questions and if you have been here for a little while, you've probably heard me talk about how much I love the snow, I love the winter, I love snow sports. And so buying a school bus was not necessarily the first thing in my mind for those exact reasons. I don't know yet how this bus will fare in the winter, but right now in the building process, I'm doing everything that I can to make it comfortable for myself and for Tara. There are windows all the way around the bus, obviously, and 
and so the ones in the back will be getting covered up or at least most of them will be getting covered up between my bed and a small wardrobe that I'm putting in um, as well as in the front where I'm planning on having like a wet room shower room but that still leaves six windows uncovered and so I am a little bit concerned about how that's gonna work in the winter in order to try and combat that I am insulating to the hilt as you can see I have like my ceilings dropping but I am putting two layers of Havelock wool around the entire bus or at least the parts that I can insulate and then I have poly iso board in the floor in addition to this I have a few things planned for the build itself to try to help keep us warm I have a bigger power station 400 amp hours of lithium which should allow me to run electric blankets when I really need it but my biggest source of heat in the winter is going to be a diesel heater now I didn't go the expensive route the Wabasta or the S bar that was not in my budget but I did purchase a Chinese diesel heater which I think cost about $165. And so everything that I've read from people in the Pacific Northwest who live in their best year round is that some of them even have to like crack their windows in the winter if they run it all night. And so I'm hopeful that it's going to work out or at least hoping that it's going to work out. And in a last case scenario, Tara and I make great cuddle buddies and I do have an electric blanket that will keep us warm just like it did in the van. All right, Kimberly Roman has a couple of questions. It looks like you will have more square footage of living space was that part of your motivator how will that affect your fuel consumption and I wish you the very best well thank you Kimberly I really appreciate it um, space was a bit of a motivator uh, and it wasn't necessarily that my last van didn't have enough space but more so that when I got Tara I was already like 80% done with my build and all of the structure was there I had known that at some point I was gonna get a dog but I really did not anticipate getting a dog as soon as I did she was a surprise she was a bit unexpected and so my build was not set up for a dog and a human but I will say more than anything my biggest motivator was finances and I've said this a couple of times in a few videos and it's not that I couldn't afford the van it's not that I was in financial trouble I think that when I say finances are playing into my decision people assume that but it was trying to be proactive, realizing how much money I was spending per month on a beautiful van, um, but a van that was a lot more than I needed in terms of newness, in terms of like appliances and all the money and you know love that I had poured into that van was beautiful and I loved it, but it was also just a realization that I could live with a little bit less, and by less, I mean like less fancy things. The last part of your question was, how is this gonna affect my fuel consumption and how is that going to impact my monthly costs? So as I was just alluding to, my monthly costs previously were out of control in my opinion due to a van payment and very expensive insurance on a commercial brand new van. So with all of that in mind, you know, with the insurance and the payment, I was spending just over $800 and at one point $900 when I would first bought the van per month. Now I'm not saying, and I wouldn't put it past me to spend $900 on gas with the way that I travel, but my goal in having this school bus is not only to travel a little bit more intentionally because I'll be a little bit limited on where I can go compared to the van, but also to travel slower. This does consume more gas. It gets about 13 miles per gallon from what I've uh, noticed so far, at least driving it. I did just recently get some work done, so I'm hoping that's going to help improve the gas mileage a little bit, but 13 is going to be compared to about 17 to 18. So it's not massive, but it is like a significant difference, especially when you consider gas prices these days. And so I'm sure that my gas costs, even if I am traveling slower or less, will be probably probably on par with what I was spending before just because of how much more gas this does consume. All right, Tyler says, I've thought about getting a van to build out and live in, but I'm nervous about cost, safety, and legality. I'm also not sure what van is best, a smaller, cheaper van like the Promaster City or a larger, high roof, more expensive van for more comfort. Any tips? Tyler, I think that is a question that all of us ask ourselves before getting into this lifestyle and then once we're in it too like me i had a high roof expensive van like you said and i decided after about a year that it wasn't for me that i needed to make a change and i think that's something that's really important to note is that whatever you get 
I'm not encouraging you to like buy and sell and figure it out that way because that might not be the most responsible thing. But if you've done your research and you make a decision that you feel good about in that moment and then you change your mind in a year, like that's okay. A lot of us, myself included, but friends that I know as well, have had multiple rigs or are looking to get a new rig or a different rig. And it's because our needs change, our desires change. And after you've lived in something for a little while, you figure out more of what you need and what you don't need and that is the best way to figure out what you actually want like for the long term if that's what you're planning on doing is living the lifestyle and through that figuring out what you actually need versus things that you might think you need now but don't actually end up using it all down the line. That said, if you haven't already, my biggest tip to anybody looking to start this lifestyle is if you have a car right now or if you can borrow someone's car or even rent a car if you don't have one for a couple of weeks and put a sleeping pad in the back, go get a cooler, put your cooler in the back, have a little power station to charge your laptop, like get things secondhand or just use what you already have put your food in a bin underneath your sleeping bag, and just try the lifestyle. Try living on the road, finding free places to park, finding BLM land, which is like free campsite land, um, public lands across the US. I cannot recommend this enough because if you're able to live with that, in that small of a space, with that little, um, in terms of accommodations, and you enjoy it and you want more of it, I think that's a great sign that this lifestyle might be for you. But on the other hand, you might do all of that and go, oh shoot, like I really need to shower more or I miss my massive fridge or convenience or seeing my friends all the time if you have like a big community back at home. There are a ton of reasons why the lifestyle might not work for you or for anybody out there and that's perfectly fine. But I think it's better to know that before you go and spend any amount of money on a rig thinking that you're going to enjoy it when in actuality, you haven't tried it out. All right, Bobby Campos asks, this bus is paid for outright, correct? So it'll be a massive game changer financially. Also, how much do you think the build out will cost and will it all be covered from the sale of the van? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> this, this bus is paid for outright, which is super exciting that I own this bus. The bus is mine. I don't have a loan on it. I don't have a lease on it. Um, I was able to pay for it because of the van that I previously sold. And yes, because of that sale of the van, I was able to become debt-free, buy my new rig outright, and I should be able to pay for all of this build and still have a little bit of savings left over. Um, that being said, my budget for the build is partially being funded by the income that I still have working part-time. I know I've said it a couple of times that I quit my job recently, and I did, um, but as a program like coordinator, I didn't want to just like up and leave and leave them without anybody to help manage the program. And so what I did instead was drop down to part-time while they found my replacement, and this allowed two things to happen. One, it allows the program that I used to coordinate or that I coordinate to stay running. And the other benefit to this is that I'll still have income coming in from my work time, my sick time, and my vacation that I'm stacking right now to get a full-time income still that I was getting you know a couple of months ago to help pay for this and cash flow this build so because of all of those things I will still have money in the bank which is so like uh, it's unbelievable how much things have changed in the past couple months and so unbelievably grateful that the sale of that van and all the work that I put into it the work that my dad helped me put into it my uncle who helped me weld the roof rack my aunt who helped me make the window covers and the cushions like all of us came together last year and my goal was not to sell the van necessarily I knew eventually I would but um as hard as it was to make that decision and to say goodbye to something that held so many memories, I know that it's paving the path for a better, more me life in the future. So super grateful and uh, appreciate your question. All right, the last question from the community tab, Jesse Hope asks, you recently remarked that you quit your job. How will you pay for your living expenses? So I did just allude to a bit of how I'm going to pay for my expenses, but there is another source of income and potentially two. So right now I'm still working part-time and that's going to probably end in late April or early May, I'm assuming, or planning on. And so I will have a couple more weeks of income. And then once I leave that job, I will still have 
have some vacation that I'm going to get paid out as well. And all of these like sums of money are going into savings or emergency funds. And so I will have that money to live off of. But I think it's also really important to mention that um, I did sell my van and that allowed me to have kind of a chunk of savings in the bank and a cushion. So that way I felt confident leaving my job. And I also recently started making money on YouTube, on this channel. And so um, that's due to all of you. So thank you very much for being here and for all of your support because that is going to be another stream of income for me. And uh, I have some plans to hopefully expand that through working with some brands, maybe starting a Patreon once I finally leave my job and have a little bit more time because I really enjoy this community. I've really enjoyed meeting all of you or meeting all of you online and want to really continue that and continue to show up in this space. And it's a really cool perk that I now get to make a little bit of income from being here and doing this. All right, now I'm switching over to Sunday's video because there are a couple of questions that ended up over there as well. Amanda Champion asked, love the skylight, can't wait to see how the bus turns out. So excited for you. Thank you, Amanda. Um, and her question was, do you have to have a CDL to drive the bus? And this was something that I wanted to address specifically because it is a question that I had when I was looking for buses. Now, what I'm saying applies to me in California only. This could vary wildly in other states, so I do not know about other states outside of California. But because of the weight and the number of axles on this bus, I do not have to have a commercial driving license. I know that if I got something that was over 24,988, um, pounds, 24,000 pounds basically, uh, I would have had to have a commercial driver's license as well as um, more axles or multiple axles, however you say that, I'm not a mechanic. Um, I would have had to have a commercial driver's license. I did look at a couple of international buses, the kind of like semi-truck front end ones because they have a little bit higher clearance. Um, I didn't love them because they were longer and I wanted to be able to like park in a normal parking lot. But I did look at them for a little while and most of them were counted out, unfortunately, just because of that weight limit. I'm not wanting to get a commercial driver's license, not wanting to deal with that hassle. And then I think there's also upkeep yearly or biannually that you have to keep up. And I just really didn't want that to be a part of my experience. So I went with something that I did not have to get a commercial driver's license for. All right, Vicky Ball asks, did you find a good tutorial or go on a course to learn how? And she's talking about the electrical system that I kind of dis dismangled, dismembered, I don't know how to say this. Um, what is the word? Disassembled, that is the word. Uh, so I did a very basic job of disassembling this electrical system and it was something that is really, uh, I hate to say common sense, but like maybe it's not difficult for me to mess up, but like I literally was tracing the wire from like that light that's behind or was behind that um, insulation all the way to the front of the bus and then I would disconnect it or cut it and tape it off. So, uh, I mean, in terms of like basic electrical experience, I did set up my van's electrical. So I do have somewhat of an understanding of how it works, but I am in no way a mechanical or electrical expert. And so for me, it was really just a tedious process of tracing the wires, cutting and taping and protecting the wires so they couldn't start a fire wrapping them up and putting them like in a safe place the bundles that were like disconnected previously before i got the bus and just making sure they couldn't come into contact with any other metal and that the fuse was pulled and then starting the bus literally every time i did that so it probably looked pretty comical anybody watching or listening from afar just like the bus would start for 30 seconds and then shut back down but i just heard so many horror stories of people cutting a line or ripping something out not remembering what it was and like five wires later they go to start the bus and it doesn't start and that was my biggest fear because I don't have the time for that to happen right now so I was very methodical before cutting the wires I would pull the fuse make sure that was the right one start the bus it turned over awesome I would cut the wire protect the wire start the bus again still worked super cool um, yeah it was a little bit scary I will admit but I did think that I was going slow enough to where if I did mess up I still had that wire in my hand and I could hopefully undo what I had just done to make sure that I still had a bus that ran. Eric Mason, I had a question. I want to be like you and other bloggers on YouTube when I'm older. I want to live in a van, but what app do you use to edit your videos? How do you do it? And I know what camera to get to vlog though. So it sounds like you already have the basics, which is great. Um, yeah, in terms of a camera, use your phone. Honestly, like a lot of people say that, but our phones have better quality than my basic kit lens, not 
this lens. I love this lens. But uh, my basic kit lens at this camera that was $800 uh, came with is actually not as good as my iPhone camera. And so start with an iPhone, start with a basic camera. It sounds like you already have that figured out. Um, I use Final Cut Pro to edit and I will admit that like my editing style is still very minimal. I don't love to like mess with the video a ton. I like it more raw um, but I am still learning as well and I would love to get into using more effects, more transitions, make things a little bit more cinematic in the future and I think that's what's really important to note is even once you are making like money on YouTube which for some people probably happens in like a day or two, other people like me took a year and a half, um, is patience, consistency, and being willing to be a beginner. Uh, I am by no means like a filmmaker at this point. I would love to make more film-like videos when I have the time in the future, but for now I'm just really in love with the process. I love making videos and connecting with community and I think if you have that deep down, like if this is something that you want to do for those reasons, I think like you should just go for it. Um, but I will say if you're just trying to go on YouTube or like blog for money, that's fine, um, but it's probably going to be really frustrating because it can take a really long time to build up um, the trust of a community and the support of a community community to actually monetize and so it's really important to love it first and I'm sure at some point then the money will come if you're again just consistent and if you love the process. All right, everyone, that is all the questions that I got this week, or almost all the questions. Like I said, if I missed yours and you wanna drop in the comments down below, I will try to reply to you this week. Um, but just really appreciate everybody who wrote in, everyone who wanted to participate, and uh, again, just really have appreciated the support of this community. It is an absolute dream and kind of a shock that I've been able to monetize YouTube and actually have some income coming in here. Um, it's really a dream just to be able to connect with people and to share my journey and to make somewhat of a living off of it. So thank you all so much for your time, for being here, and for watching today's video. I will see you guys all Sunday. Bye.